what are your memories like and how do you experience them? Well, my memories are varied and diverse. I've had, a, and by this question we're really meaning my first memories century. of my first century life and yeah. life in the spirit world, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. So I experience those memories in a slightly different way than I experience memories of things that have happened in the last 34 years, nearly 35 years, um, that I've been back here on Earth. So when I have memories from the first century or in the spirit world, I have all of the emotions associated with that memory and I understand the event and the people involved in the event and what was happening for me during the event or events. But I don't have a visual um, depiction. I don't have a scene in my head and I can't recall visual things about it or smells or tastes. But it is just as real as if I'm having a memory of something that's happened to me in the last 34 years. And in those memories, I often have a smell or a taste or a scene or a, a colour or something that I associate or that, that I remember from that, that event happening, as well as the emotions of what was going on during that time. The, the basis of all of our memories is actually emotional. Yeah, I'm kind of sort of one of you hoping that just can I kind of do a clarify now? Sure, I'm going to explain oh, okay. some more. I'll carry on. Yeah. And at the end. Um, so most of our, the basis of all of our memories and how we remember things is actually through our emotions. And that's why for a lot of us, we don't have clear memories of our childhood because we've suppressed the emotions in our childhood. And when we open up emotionally, suddenly we seem to have all these new memories or their memories of things that happened in our childhood that before then we couldn't remember well. Yeah. So my first century memories and memories of things that happened in the spirit world and the memories of things that have happened to me here on earth in the last 34 years, they're, they're, their basis is all emotional. But there is this distinction that I was telling you about and that is that the ones that I had in the spirit world and on earth in the first century, I had a different physical body when I was on earth and it and physical and spirit body and the spirit body when I went into the spirit world than I have now. So the the memories were stored in my soul. But and here back on earth the memories are still stored in my soul. But I have other um, other ways of uh, other tools if you like of, mem of remembering and that is my spirit body senses and mind and the brain in, in this body and so that's why I can have visual and sensory memories because the, the, the vision and the sen all of the senses are stored in our, in our spirit body's mind and, and body. So those memories of the last 34 years, I have, I have these other sensory um, memories if you like along with the emotions. And for the time in the spirit world and on earth before then, I just have the emotions because I have a different spirit body and physical body. So maybe I can expand even further. Yeah, yeah. it's just the, the, obviously I've got no understanding of <laughs> the reincarnation process. And yep. so I'm not, and I don't know if I'm going to even understand when you explain, to be yeah, honest. Sure. But um, it's like I can identify with the memories of what you talk about in your last 30 things, but they're sort of the soul memory. That's, yeah. well, I'm kind of fascinated and at the same time not, um, yeah, finding it hard to have anything to tangible yeah. yep. to connect with like, okay, well, I, and I suppose they can't because there's nothing like it really, is there? Well, let me give, let's have a tangible example. Okay, that'd be great. Of being hit by a bus. Okay. <laughs> It's like pretty extreme. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, and I've given this example to mm. people before because it's it kind of, I hope it sort of demonstrates a little bit more <clears> what <throat> I'm talking about. So, if, if I'd been hit by a bus in the last 34 years, yep. I would have the memory of, if I was fully allowing all of my emotions, I would have, when I recalled that event, I would be able to remember standing on the curb whether it was sunny, if I could feel the sun or the wind, I'd, I'd remember those sensory things. And, and I might remember things that were going on in my head. I might have been distracted or upset about something. 
I remember stepping out onto the road and then I might remember the screech of brakes, so I'd hear that. I remember the, the sound of that, uh, the feeling of impact on my physical body of something really large hitting me <laughs> unexpectedly, yeah. the shock, yeah. so the yeah. emotion, the shock associated with that, the physical pain associated with that, the feeling of helplessness maybe, and, and everything that happened from then on, I would have sights, sounds, smells. Yeah. I might smell the asphalt as I hit it, um, the blood maybe, of people coming over, the sound of mobile phones. I might hear all, have all kinds of different memories yeah. that are associated yeah. with this bus accident. Yeah. Now, say I'd been hit by a bus, even though there weren't buses yeah. in the first century. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I was now here, back on Earth, remembering that event, I would have the sense that I was on a curb. I wouldn't have any visual for that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't have a scene in my head of what that curb looked like or this, how the air felt or any of those things. But I would know I was on the, on the curb and that I was feeling distracted and upset about something. So I would I had have the emotional sense of where I was and what I was feeling. And then as I stepped off the curb, I wouldn't necessarily have any of the sounds, yeah. of, you know, I wouldn't have the sounds of the bus screeching, but I would feel the fear and the shock. Okay. Suddenly what's happened, I would know that a bus has hit me, even because though I can't see it or hear it, but the feelings, I have the knowledge that it's happened. And then I would feel the pain still and the grief and the powerlessness and the sense that people are coming to help me and all of these things, but I don't have a visual, I don't have the smell. I don't have the sounds. Mm. I just, but it's as real as if you did, as as if it happened in this last thirty-four years. Yeah, it's in fact it's incredibly intense. There, because the only way to exp access these memories is to be open emotionally. Then the emotions are overwhelming. Yeah, and it's it's a very intense sense of something that has happened and how I felt throughout it. Um, and you can feel obviously the other people as well because you know yes. what those people felt like. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 And wow. so that's the main, or oh, it's one of the ways that I know who my soulmate is as well because I remember experiences with him. Yeah. From a soul, like an emotional perspective. Yeah, yeah. The knowledge that he was there and the knowledge of things that have happened. Obviously, I didn't get hit by a bus in the first century. <laughs> and most of the things that did happen in my first century life have not happened to me in the last 34 years. Okay. Which in itself is quite um, validating in that I know I'm not confusing something that's happened in the last 34 years with, with another experience. But at the same time, it's very disconcerting when you start allowing this because you feel like, wow... This thing really happened, I know, but it didn't happen in the last 34 years. And this is where often this psychological, the mind wants to dominate mm. and say, that can't be real. And the soul is screaming, well, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a real journey, hey, to, to actually just accept your soul rather yeah. than your mind and believe that. Definitely. Yeah, For yes. all of us. Yeah. Um, but especially in the case of the 14 of us who have returned to Earth, because there is this added psychological element to it where your memories, you know, like this is Eloise's life and your mind is not going to protest at that because your no. mind's been with your soul that whole time. Yeah. For me, this mind has not been with this soul this whole time. So the mind, which is very much lauded on the planet at the moment, that we should Literally. listen to the mind, um, is trying to dominate the soul all the time and say, that can't be real, that can't be real. But the soul knows it is yeah. and, and the soul is much more powerful than the mind and that's why it's exhausting to try and <laughs> dominate your experience and your emotions with your mind because the soul is much more, uh, it's, it's the controller of everything really in our experience. Yeah, yeah it's pretty fascinating, hmm. pretty amazing. <laughs>